Okay, so the first type of structural classification or category I'll talk about is fibrous joints. These are joints that are connected. So when two bones are connected by um, a dense fibrous connective tissue. So typically um, dense regular, it's a pretty parallel fiber situation. Um, so there's three types of fibrous joints, three actually exa um, examples. First one are sutures. Mentioned these already. These are fibrous um, connections between the bones of the skull um, where you actually have separate bones. So here is the, the frontal bone versus um, temporal parietal bones. There's different bones that make up your skull connected by these sutures. Very strong. Um, these are synarthroses. They are immobile. You'll read some places, sutures may be tiny, tiny, tiny bit mobile. Um, they're still categorized as, as immobile, not much movement. This type of joint is actually important for um, skull and brain growth during development. So there are certain places in between these bones where fontanelles exist in fetuses and, and then children as the brain grows. There are little holes that allow um, the brain to grow and the skull actually grows too, right? Um, by the time you're an adult, then there's no more growth and those fontanelles, those holes are closed up um, and these sutures are completely mobile. Okay, then there are fibers that connect your tooth to the bones of your jaw. So maxilla and mandible, two different bones where your teeth are embedded. Um, these are called gomphosis or gomphoses for plural. Um, I guess I'll be consistent and sutures, gomphoses. Um, these are also synarthroses. So immobile joints where your tooth connects to the bones of your jaw. You want that to be immobile, right? So you can chew things um, and not have your, your teeth move around as you are chewing. So anchoring the tooth into the, the socket actually. And of course there's times in development when these fibers um, get broken down and teeth fall out. Um, in young children, that's a normal process. So losing baby teeth. Um, other than that, you want these fibers to stay in place and, and hold on to that tooth. Um, I also remember gomphoses, so like kind of like nom nom or gum um, makes you think of the mouth. So that's that. Um, then there is one more type that is going to actually be a, I'll write this first, uh, amphiarthrosis. So they are amphiarthroses. Um, these are membranes that connect two parallel long bones together. So these are going to be called syndesmosis or syndesmoses. Um, and they're going to be slightly mobile because although they restrict, they keep those two bones together. Um, so these are the bones of either your lower arm, so radius and ulna, or the tibia and fibula of your lower leg. You want those bones to stay together and not move apart from one another as you're moving but you also have to have some flexibility in those. They allow for some movement, um, especially radius and ulna because there's some rotation that happens and a little bit of movement has to happen for that to happen. So that's why these are amphiarthroses. Um, they are designed to hold those two bones together. Um, this is called actually an interosseous membrane, a tissue membrane that is between two bones. So again, in between the radius and ulna of your forearm, and then this in this picture, this is actually the fibula and tibia of your lower leg. Okay, those are the three types of fibrous joints. So they are always made of dense connective tissue, but they can either be the examples of ones that are either synarthroses, 
no movement or ampere atherosis, very little movement. Um, you're never going to have them be extremely, extremely mobile. 